Hello, hello, my dear friends. How are you all? Welcome to Divine Debut. This is Kathy speaking. Thank you for joining me here on this Sunday afternoon, Sunday the 2nd of July of 2023. Happy Sunday, my dear friends. For some of you, it will be Monday morning when you're watching this video, but nevertheless, um, the message uh, is coming through. Uh, through this divine spread that we usually do on a Friday or on a Sunday. Now, I'm sure many of you did not expect me uh, to do this as this message is coming through a little bit later than what I usually do. Better late than never, they say. I've had many, many issues, many issues. I've had to redo my computer. Um, yesterday was just such a clouded day for me. Couldn't get the words in order. It was. It's just been quite a weekend. How has your weekend been going? How's it been going for you? Let's take a divine spread and see. I'm going to, this time, because we are just 24 hours before a full moon in Capricorn, a Saturn ruled full moon. We know times can be a bit stressful, but it's a... It's a very grounding and very stabilizing uh, full moon, which is quite a surprise. Let's see how this recording goes. Everything is brand new on my computer. Not a brand new computer. We've re, we've just cleaned it out. We did the Virgo thing, you know, so had to redo all the programs and I'm still getting there. Okay, for those of you that uh, up with me and have been supporting this channel my dear patrons the individual love readings will be worked on tomorrow and the day after so thank you for your patience and happy july happy birthday happy fourth of july let's just hope that everything goes smoothly for those of you in america the day of independence Hope you have a wonderful celebration and a nice holiday. What's going on in the Divine Spread? And please stay with me uh, till the end of this tarot reading when I'm going to show you the chart a little bit and the full moon. Just quickly, just quickly to show you why this is possibly a stabilizing and uh, we could also say a, a full moon which is bringing in manifestation. Uh, something real Capricorn Capricorn is uh, earth it's cardinal earth so this could be gratification or the ability to see what you've been working on that it's actually uh, coming through okay because um, you did you planted a seed a new seed with that new moon in Capricorn um, this almost Christmas 23rd of December last year so what is culminating we will see so we've got judgment and judgment is second chances i say it's also a resurrection right something has or is dying and leaving your life okay and spirit is saying it's time to resurrect you are going through a moment of crisis but there is divine source help here so I'm using a Greek deck today just to do something different. As I've told you, I get bored easily, and I'm sure most of you do as well. I'll be taking the Gaia Oracle for a message from Spirit. I haven't used the Gaia Oracle for a while by Tony Carmine Salerno. So I felt called to take the Oracle. Gaia. Gaia Oracle. We'll be taking a message in a moment but let's see with a divine spread um love to hear from you your comments thank you for liking sharing subscribing and commenting of course we've got the analysis of the astrology of this full moon five of pentacles five of pentacles which is a sense of lack obviously and uh, this is venus in taurus it's all about practical matters, maybe even money matters, feeling a sense of lack, maybe even not believing that you can make it out of a challenging financial uh, place that you're in. 
um, still, and we know that financially it's been very tough for everyone. Um, thank you for taking part in the 20% summer sale discount, 20% off discount sale that we put on the summer solstice. Um, that is over um, for, as of today. Um, as I was saying, get in quickly because it's not going to last. I want to thank you all for trusting and letting me read for you and your your love always. Let's see, dear spirit, thank you, Archangels, for guiding me. What is this divine spread about? We're, we're reading the energies. Remember, it's a general reading. And we've had some really good aspects with uh, Jupiter trining over to the sun. Venus is... Uh, looking to retrograde and we'll be doing a special uh, a special video a special analysis on the v uh, Venus retrograde the Venus star point that is happening in Leo so uh, what's been going on for you eight years ago you will be revisiting this in the month of July we'll be doing that in the next few days so if you're not on patreon you need to be on pa uh, tier three uh, so that you can get that analysis. And thank you for even considering. What's going on in the divine spread? Thank you, spirit. What a month. What a month this is. With the nodes changing. The nodes of the moon changing axis. North node into Aries. South node into Libra. Of course, this will be very important for the cardinal signs. So Capricorn, Cancer, Aries and Libra. Let's see what's going on with the divine spread, which is my own spread, which I formulated a few years ago. We've been doing it usually twice a week. Let's see what's going on. I know for some of you, this is your favorite spread. Six of Cups is at the foundation. Now, I'm not trying to make this a love reading, but Six of Cups is a soulmate uh, connection. It could be a friendship. It could be uh, it could even be siblings, a relationship with a soulmate, someone that is, you know, your souls are connected. And it can also speak to nostalgia. Okay, nostalgia, um, the past, of course, it's in the past position. So there's, uh, there's something that you're nostalgic about, and it is cancer season. And cancer is all about the memory and the past as well. It is connected possibly also to family. Okay, so this is the root of the reading. What is hidden that we do not know? We have the Four of Cups. And the Four of Cups is usually a card of boredom. It's usually a card of boredom. For me, it's also emotional, um, an, an emotional lack or opportunities emotionally missed opportunities or maybe even emotionally not being happy within a home okay so we've got a few cups it is an emotional time cancer season is the sensitive crab right that has a hard exterior they put on a brave face but internally they're all very mushy and soft and and fuzzy and sweet and sensitive it is a time and we are focusing at, um into the past maybe even when we were children okay four of cups is we're emotionally not happy something to do with a home or our just emotional lives right our personal lives or whatever's going on around our home it could be connected to family or parents um even anything to do with an actual home that you know the, the building <laughs> you know the property your property your home where you're residing um all these things may be coming up Recent past, we have the Ace of Pentacles, Ace of Earth. Aces we know are opportunities. Uh, Ace of Earth does speak to our finances, our, um, our securities. It could speak to a job. It could speak to a, um, a connection. So uh, when I say connection, it could be marriage. It could be a commitment. It could be a new job. It could be anything. It's something that provides you with security and it's all about being grounded. It's like the roots that you see here. So Earth is very stable. It's very much about material 
things. So there's a potential, and we know there's always free will. There, there has been a potential in the recent past for something stable long term. I don't know if you've grabbed the opportunity. Now, timing could be a little bit different for each of you. It may uh, not be exactly in the recent past for some of you. Maybe a little bit further back or maybe closer to the now. Okay, let's look at the now position. We have another ace and the ace of swords. And I love that it's looking upways because... It does speak to intelligence, right? Perception, communication. It's, it's, it's the sword of strength. It's the sword of reckoning and it's the sword of truth. Um, it clears the air, right? Another ace, two aces. So these could be possibilities, um, communication, perception about your security is about some sort of a new beginning that uh, requires um, patience, um, intelligence, clarity, being open and not fearing, right? This is the sword um, that speaks to the truth and truth is always, we always speak our truth and when we speak our truth, we don't fear anything. Um, Ace of Swords is classified as a victory card. I don't know what kind of victory this could be. This could also be the Ace, Ace of Swords, be the sword of intelligence, finding new ways to, I don't know, to have the possibility of, of an opportunity, right? Because remember that uh, this is air and air is communication can speak to legalities can also speak to anything written and spoken but this is what's going on in the now we'll see what's crowning we have the nine of pentacles and the nine of pentacles speaks to abundance logically but it also speaks to knowing our worth being in the garden of eden being in in an environment of of abundance uh, but also um being the individual, taking charge of one's own life is the Nine of Pentacles. It's someone that loves, uh, that loves quality things. Uh, it, being surrounded by, by, um, by things that give you a sense of security. Um, and this is working extra hard. It is a Virgo card. It's it's Saturn in Virgo, and this is some of you could be working uh, two jobs, working extra hard, right? Uh, this could also be a promise, a promise that this new position or this op opportunity will bring great abundance. But it's like you're being tested by Saturn, by a teacher, someone who could be a higher up than you could be a boss, could be someone that's giving you an opportunity to take on a position um, and, you know, being, and I'm going to say, doing your due diligence, right? Because uh, Virgo is all about diligence, same as uh, Saturn. Saturn in Virgo is about working extra hard, working behind the scenes, uh, but knowing that there is certainty about success, surely here. What is the action and advice? More pentacles, lots of earth and lots of water, which speaks to a lot of recessive energies. This is um, Venus in Capricorn. Now, three of pentacles is you being noticed, you being seen. It's like you're up on stage and you're being, your, your abilities are being noticed. Um, great opportunities here and it speaks to work surely work and finances and i don't know why but i get that this four of cups in the hidden position because fours speak to um our home our our emotional life right and cups we see the cups overflowing so there could be some sort of happiness something that was missed in the past that is resurfacing returning possibly um, in the near future that is giving you a second chance 
at something that you're going to succeed in something it's like you didn't get to let's say that you're an actor or an actress or a dancer and you weren't able to perform um there wasn't enough time so you were not able to perform therefore you had to wait for the second second show or second opportunity whatever this is it feels like a second opportunity and the three of pentacles speaks to collaboration and growth what is the possible outcome we've got the five of pentacles so it's not by chance that this card fell out before um and what i notice on this card what really stands out to me it really so much looks like it's this is venus in taurus and we could see the the, the head of the bull here um venus in taurus is all about practical matters security um yes being very slow and gradual but certain about success and I get a sense of value and the finer things in life here that you've worked really hard towards. There's some sort of an opportunity, a second chance, I'm going to say again, which this opportunity has somehow began in the recent past, I would say. And remember that uh, the five of pentacles is a step before the six, a step before the six of pentacles, which is all about receiving uh, for some people, it will be all about giving. So, you know, uh, the 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 giving and receiving the reciprocity, that is what potentially is here now. Now, it, this may not be work for all of you. This could be relationships, right? It could be relationships connected to a soulmate. If this is in relation to a sibling, I don't know why, but I get that uh, someone's been put up on a stage and they're putting on a performance. It's like being given a second chance um, or being put through a certain test where they get a second opportunity. Or maybe it's like being tested if so, you know you're you're wanting to cut corners it's like saturn is saying you're given the opportunity are you going to do your due diligence and do the right thing or are you going to um cut corners i feel that this is a saturnian test uh that is going on here and what i notice in the card is we see the bull here wearing these long earrings and this beautiful necklace promises values and prosperity and manifestation but it is the outcome card which says keep working and keep trusting because remember the five of pentacles usually shows the church and you know in the background and taurus is all about remember the hierophant it is about faith do you believe jupiter is in taurus now and jupiter is all about you know um expansion and trusting that spirit has got your back and that there will be a manifestation of things that are that will give you a sense of security and prosperity and happiness um it's just a matter of trusting that that will happen let's see what the divine position holds we have uh, the moon and this is a full moon remember a full moon in capricorn which is in really good connection to Jupiter. I will show you this on the chart at the end of the reading. So stay with me till the end of the reading. So we've got Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio here. And the moon, remember, speaks to sensitivities, secrecy, emotions, things that were hidden pertaining to the home, the past. Lots going on, I mean, in the Cancer season. Um... Mercury is in Cancer, so a lot of uh, possibilities for having those conversations connected to past situations. And um, there will be sudden revelations pertaining to love and security and values um, and things that were kept 
secret because of sensitivities now have got the opportunity to come through i mean even though the 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 moon in capricorn is in fall uh there's a sensitivity there i remember the sun is illuminating through cancer um passing through cancer which is the the sign of the moon so is bringing illumination and possible clarity because full moons speak to clarity it's like the moon receiving the sunlight and therefore having that aha moment of okay so let me keep going because maybe i had given up on something but it's more about now seeing things uh manifesting i i get with this full moon what else do we have with the moon here we have the eight of pentacles another card of work this is a mercury in virgo and this is all about this is all about it could be uh it could have to do with collaboration and business or a new opportunity to collaborate uh with someone uh someone's willing to put in the work this is uh you know mercury in virgo finds is very good with the little details uh that is very intelligent very discerning very much of perfection as well we've got so many pentacles here we've got an eight of pentacles nine of pentacles again which brings up the virgo archetype even though it is cancer season now cancer season works well with earth earth and water are in good connection so something's going on around work something that you do not expect is going to show up and we have the five of swords five of swords is competition it is also self-doubt internal conflict competition so what saturn is saying now it's like we're going to be challenged to stay strong and stay trusting that we hold a position of power the power is from within um this could be difficult conversations possible even backstabbing i'm going to say uh situations concerning work this could also be jealousy this could also be jealousy from third parties because someone is in the limelight i get here being given a second chance at some sort of a position of power or promotion that could also be playing out here what's at the bottom and we've got the world card which is saturn it is saturn and saturn is like a closing up of a cycle here is venus what a beautiful card it's called the world card of course it's a number 21 and we see venus in the womb now venus is she's um in her shadow phase my dear friends so whatever's going on you know past 10 days roughly um she's entered her the degrees where she's going to retrograde over so things that are going on now you will be revisiting and re a revisiting will be redirecting re-looking at retweaking so it is about second chances we've got the magician here the magician is another ace now this is virgo and gemini gemini's intelligence it's communication conversation uh short distance travel this these are the stars aligning to give us the tool to manifest what's beneath that and we've got the hanging man so we've got three major arcana cards here so i'm going to say this after surrendering and after any sacrifices pisces is all about unconditional love and working and you know working towards something without having the um without having the promise that there will be a return on the unconditional love or the sacrifice that you've made here is the magician so we go from the um let's say the 12 which is the 12th house right some sort of a karmic ending or needing to see things from a different perspective someone needed time now it's all about new beginnings now remember a full moon is an ending and a culmination but it's also a completion point where we we see the fruits of our labor because a new moon in capricorn which happened last year around christmas right capricorn is a saturn ruled sign so if you've done your due diligence you've worked hard 
this this is what you've been working on a sense of prosperity and feeling stable and secure and even doing things that make you feel good putting yourself in an opportunity where you could be in like feeling like you're in the garden of eden having the prosperity around you that you deserve because you've worked extra hard whatever that means for you so we've got the magician an ace an ace um we go straight to an ace after sacrifice after some sort of an ending and then we've got the world card which really it's a 21 it equals a three so we go straight from the ace to the three um and the three is remember it's an expansion it's growth it could be collaboration now the world card speaks to leo aquarius taurus and scorpio and we know that mid-month we've been talking about this mid-month the nodal axis changes so the future collective consciousness is changing so it's it's a huge shift it really is and it's more about having the guts and the courage to take that leap of faith to to take that a journey whatever this journey speaks to for you could be a physical could be a metaphorical could be any sort of a risk let's see what's going on we are going to be having unexpected turns of events happening around about now we've got a lot of a lot that is promised beautiful aspects in the astrology even though we've got challenges yes we do we've still got many blessings and opportunities let's see with the lenormand what's possibly going on and what are we talking about and we'll take a we'll take a wisdom of the oracle as well we've got the moon again so something um is going on coming up to this full moon we've got news coming in these could also be legal papers communication a phone call an email whatever this is it's got to do with some sort of an ending now scorpio speaks to the natural eighth house of sex metamorphosis mysticism money that comes through from other sources from a partner this could speak to an inheritance it could speak to um, any uh, tax returns tax debt anything um pertaining to eighth house matters which is where the south node of the moon is ending so this could also be uh, pointing back to the beginning now listen to this the beginning of 2022 where we had where we had venus retrograding uh um, venus retrograding yes in capricorn and that was when the nodes shifted into taurus scorpio so this has been an 18 month cycle that could be coming to an end um and it, the words that come through for me uh with what was going on astrologically back then it was tough love it was um a lack of security and prosperity where emotions were concerned possible uh financial challenges and mishaps and loss and um a lack of fairness and injustices now the story is changing believe you me the story is changing now let's see because we've got two scorpio cards here pluto pluto remember speaks to riches but it also speaks to an ending and we've got the fish and the fish is abundance the fish is neptune neptune and of course um You know the fish speaks to the king of pentacles which does speak to securities it does speak to prosperity so i'm going to say because you know the fish is pisces and of course pisces is ruled um by neptune and jupiter and jupiter is in venus a venus ruled sign in taurus so there is great promise here that's really interesting here so 
I, what I'm getting is is that for some of you, this is the ending of a sense of lack. You you are one step before the prosperity. Remember what I said. This is Venus in Taurus. So we're going through a bit of a difficult turn here. So we've got a five, a nine, an eight, and a seven. Five, nine, eight, and seven. All eight uh, odd numbers apart from number eight, which is like the infinity symbol revisiting a situation. Odd means something at an imbalance. We've got a couple of fives here. And five speak to changes, a sense of lack. Let's see what's at the bottom here. We've got the ring. So there is some sort of a contract here, some sort of a promise. And it's another seven. And um, what was it? I thought I saw... I don't know why the chariot card comes to me. Did it fall out before? Maybe it was when I was shuffling. I don't know. I can't remember. I just can't remember. Anyway, so beneath that, we've got a divine feminine. We've got a divine feminine. This could be you or this could be another person. But uh, we see that she's on the path to some sort of a cycle that she's revisiting. But this cycle should be revisiting it. I do feel it's going to be an ending to this cycle. It could have to do with karma as well. Beneath the uh, this divine feminine, if you're a divine masculine, this is the person you're thinking of. We've got the garden and it's a number 20, just like the judgment card. So maybe a second chance at happiness and being in that garden of Eden, which I see the nine of pentacles very much like this divine feminine. So this is like a second chance into the Garden of Eden and into prosperity, feeling a sense of security, feeling very proud as well, I would say. So we'll see. We will see. Let's um, take some more cards, shall we? Now, the ring can speak to also an offer. An offer. Uh, this could be a new contract, a new job, a new position. A, uh, let's move in together if this is a love situation. I do see that there is a conflict though. I mean, this is Uranus in Aquarius. Something needs to be cleared and someone is trying to find an intelligent way of getting out of a difficult situation. It could be anything to do uh, with legalities. Uranus is intelligence. It's having a bird's eye view of a situation. So someone using their sharp, ingenious mind to figure out a way to resolve or to solve or to get out of hot water, of a job that was not um, a job, an effort, a position of service, whatever that is. And also, this could also speak to someone stealing the, um, stealing the, the light, or being so intelligent. There's some sort of com competition here, and the competition is tough. But someone uses their in inquisitive mind and wins in the end, even if it steps on other people's toes which is something maybe that they don't feel good about, but that's the way things go. That's the way it is. Let's see what's going on with the uh, wisdom of the oracle. What is the message, please, spirit? The message, thank you. What is the message, please, spirit? Archangel Michael. Archangel Lofil, dear Hermes, what is the advice? We've got Yang energy. We have an ace and Yang and it's in the upright and we've got observer in the reverse, which is a number 49. And the Yang energy we know is masculine another ace we've got so many aces today let's see what this reversed message of the observer this could also be given uh, we're given a second opportunity to tweak to revisit something that we've 
that we've um, missed an opportunity on. And again, this could be the second chance. It is a 49, which equals a 13. So having the opportunity to retweet, to go over, or to have that second chance because we missed something. Let's see. Number 49. 48, 49, and it's the reverse message. It is an advantageous time for you to get some distance from what you're doing and see your work and your projects from a different perspective. And I'm going to say, if this is not you, then this is someone else looking at your projects and your work and the effort that you've put in, in whatever you've put effort in, whatever you've sacrificed yourself towards. The trick is to connect to the essence of your goals and aspirations while letting the form and timing be dictated by spirit. You may be too personally attached to an outcome and unable to see the miracle because it's not turning out exactly as you planned. Trust spirit. And I feel that that's what the Five of Swords could also speak to. The perfect version of your abundance is right in front of you. Remain neutral and curious and watch the miracle unfold. So you see, it does speak to a miracle. Let's read the Yang energy. The masculine principle of movement and creative activity, the power to make things happen, taking action. Yang represents the power of action, the energies that propel the world forward and manifesting thought and desire into concrete form. Now is the perfect time to act for you can easily build momentum and make headway. What you want will come to fruition if you proceed confidently. This card signifies new life and new life and is a sure sign that obstacles have been overcome. There is no reason to hesitate. You are the shaper of your destiny now. Where relationships are concerned, circumstances are supporting action on your part. It's okay to make the first move. Trust that you will quickly know where you stand. In matters of the heart, there is movement toward your highest good, so go forth with assurance. Passion is in the air, and now is the time to dance to the tune of love. Take the lead. So it looks like someone's willing to take the lead. Prosperity, projects, partnerships, and all matters relating to your business are out of the obstacle phase and on to the make it happen phase. Now is the time to stake your claim and get things done. While you can expect to be busier than usual, this card tells you that you have all the energy and vitality you need to accomplish your goals. Abundance is waiting for you to claim it. See, exactly what the reading has been talking about. Remember, this position is the crowning position, so it's a very, very important position. Let's take the Gaia Oracle for a moment, and we'll take a few more cards here. Dear Gaia, please advise with this full moon in Capricorn, especially for those of you that are born roughly at the middle, at the middle of the cardinal signs, so you're an Aries, Libra, Capricorn or Cancer, this full moon will be very important for you. Of course, for the earth signs, they'll be completing something, um, something comes naturally. And for the water signs, very positive. So earth and water signs, very positive for you guys. It's the cardinal signs. So Aries and Libra mainly, maybe even Cancer, that will be put out of their comfort zone. Let's see what's going on. Zen garden, inner sanctuary. So the inner sanctuary, this could also be an inner feel-good energy. And it's a number 38. 38 equals an 11. So, you know, the full moon will be at the 11th degree. Interesting. Number 11 is a, a, what did I say number 11? It's a number 38. It adds up to an 11. Number 38. Life is full of ups and downs, a constant ebb and flow between war and peace. Everything has a positive and negative charge. 
harmony and disharmony, order and chaos, clarity and confusion, calm and conflict, all are partners. In our physical world, you cannot have one without the other, yet like all of us, you sometimes wish that things could change. Why can't we just live in peace? Well, the answer is that peace is possible, but you can only find it from within. The first step is to accept the world as it is. Just let things be. Trust that everything happens for a reason and that there is a higher purpose to all things. Now become aware of your breath. Let it guide you to a place of peace and light, a beautiful garden within the golden chamber of your heart. It is here within your inner sanctuary that you will find the peace you seek. Peace is only possible when there is peace within our hearts. When you are able to find peace, even in the midst of chaos, then you are a true master. The affirmation is, I accept and love the world as it is. I trust that there is a higher order to everything. I find solace in the sanctuary of my heart. I move my awareness within. I am the peace I seek. So this is saying about taking time out. Of course, the world is in chaos and in disharmony. We know that. Take solace, go into your Zen garden, that inner sanctuary, um, and find the peace within. Because when we have peace and we feel good internally, this is how we create our external environment, right? Can you make your home, your Zen garden, your Garden of Eden, your little sanctuary? Can you make that, you know, your home, wherever you reside, wherever you live? I'm wishing you well and sending you my best wishes so that you can uh, do that. I know it's, it, you know, times are really, really tough, but there's always hope. Let's take another layer. Something is completing here surely and it's an accomplishment. It sure is because the world card is a card of accomplishment. Let's take one card on that world card, which is the general energy. We have the 10 of my god the ten of wands this is a completion a cycle completing so it's um sun in sag so the sun in a jupiterian sign wow this is obviously an ace it turns into an ace you are completing something that was really heavy some of you may be completing that uh in the near future let's see why we've got the six of cups here why do we have the Six of Cups, which speaks to, of course, it is a soulmate card. This Ten of Swords has come out because I always shuffle earlier before I open cam. It showed up three times. This is the third time that I see the Ten of Swords, which says Ten of Wands, Ten of Swords. We're almost at the Ten of Pentacles. We see the Ace and then the Nine, which brings some sort of a completion. We know Nines are all about completion but may we may be needing to revisit something um revisit retweak relook at okay again another ace right so there's been some sort of an ending some sort of betrayal between a soulmate between a sibling um some sort of a childhood wound that is coming up um in in your memory it's 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 forged in your DNA, right? These could be memories of a past lifetime as well, where there was a lot of hardship. Now, this could also speak to uh, challenging conversations with a soulmate. Uh, could even be, you know, any soulmate. Doesn't have to be a romantic, because this is Uranus in Gemini, and Gemini is yap 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 information or a lack thereof. Um, Uranus could be, you know, sudden uh groundbreaking harsh cutting um and a very unexpected turn of events that happened um in the past let's see what's hidden with the four of cups what is in the hidden position we have the seven of cups the seven of cups which is moon in scorpio hmm A lot of secrecy, a lot of secrecy. And of course, Seven of Cups does remind me of the Piscean energy. A lot of water, nevertheless. So, the Seven of Cups is being very confused. There are a lot of secrets. There's a lot of uh, lack of understanding here. 
And this could also say that you don't know about or you're not letting others know um, some sort of emotional challenges that either you're going through or the person that you are thinking of while you watch this. Right now, uh, sevens are conflictual, of course, but the seven of cups could also be many opportunities. Let's take another one. And we've got temperance here. And it speaks to divine timing. Now, temperance, of course, is Archangel Michael. This is a promise of divine timing and that many cups will be, you know, you've got the ability to transform anything that is it was emotionally very hard for you. Um, I mean, Moon in Scorpio could be very dark, very hidden, very much about the psyche as well, right? Memories coming up pertaining to the past. Maybe these could be, these could be if you're dealing with someone um, where there's been distrust or they haven't given you a chance, they haven't been open or something has been going on. The moon is playing a very big role in this reading. Uh, maybe even last, as I said, uh, early uh, 2022, what was going on then for you? Um, it's like things are changing now because Moon in Scorpio can be very much about the psyche um, and very much pertaining to fears as well. But Scorpio is also a death and a metamorphosis, a death of, you know, uh, letting go of any psychological issues or fears pertaining to the past. Remember, this is all about, this is like uh, what's necessary here is using your logic and using your intellect to know that when there's been a darkness, when you've been going through a lot of, uh, you know, maybe a difficult breakup or a, a very challenging time, a very dark uh, time in your life pertaining to, and this could also be, speak to children as well, hardships where a child of yours, for some of you, this could be, know that you would will find the resolution and just like the wheel of fortune you know the will will not always be facing down remember the ten of swords is like the ending of the darkness the ending of a phase let's see what that ace of pentacles is in the recent past there's the devil and the devil does speak to karma returning back into the same cycle possibly, but also the devil can speak to Saturn. Remember, this is a Saturn full moon, which is um, aspected really well. And the, the uh, good aspects towards this full moon promise manifestation in real time, manifestation in practical matters, manifestation in uh, prosperity. You've done the work, you're doing the work. For some of you, you're still creating, you're still working, extra hard you're putting in extra hours there's great promise here now this could also speak to of course a karmic situation dealing with um i don't know a love affair i mean the devil could speak to love affairs secret love affairs uh the devil can also speak to just fears fears of unhealthy attachments um a fear of loss the loss of power all these themes could be coming up with the devil let's see what this ace of swords is in the now and we've got the eight of cups we've got the seven and then the eight of cups wow you know it's interesting because neptune has just turned retrograde so the veil is starting to, and this happened yesterday or the day before, and that's why I, I was, you know, very, very, my mind was really clouded. I couldn't get my words right. It was very, um, very potent, the energy of Neptune in Pisces. Neptune is in his home sign of Pisces, right? And he's the god of the seas. Can you communicate under the water? Can you communicate when there's so many clouds around? Neptune are the clouds, Right, it's the, the overcast sky. You cannot see what's out there. 
Neptune is the dream, it's the vision, it's, it's the divine. Neptune does promise um, that we've got the ability to create, right? But it, he can also um, really cloud your judgment and there's something that will be cleared here, obviously. I feel that the Ace of Swords on these Eight of Cups here speaks to uh, clarity and the the possibility of yes leaving a past emotional difficult situation and even you know spiritually speaking ready to take that journey ready to um to meet halfway if i can use that term um so this sword obviously is breaking through the clouds um, and it could be that truth resolves a possibility of some sort of an emotional ending um, or it's going to um, it's going to activate a new emotional situation because we know the eight of cups is someone leaves an emotional situation that they could not find their total happiness in so they leave those eight of cups in the past and take you know the transition emotionally or maybe even physically this could also be a physical move moving to another place where someone finds their happiness emotionally speaking right let's take one more and we've got the tower this is enlightenment um, no doubt but this is also a quick change a quick turn of events what is the nine of pentacles because if we've got someone uh, truly closing the door on something that was not stable then they're finding their prosperity elsewhere right their happiness let's say or even their um in solitude finding their peace their peace of mind we've got an aha moment that's going on here the tower is here it's a it's an unexpected turn of events let's see what that nine of pentacles is and we've got justice here so this can speak to possible separation and divorce for some people that's happening unexpectedly and out of the blue this could be something that you are finding out about someone else we do have the letter here about an ending someone leaving their job suddenly unexpectedly right maybe th these are themes that we'll be finding out on this full moon around this full moon so we do have libra here and remember that the scales need to be balanced libra is justice it's legalities it's fairness it's a portal it's the portal that opens the portal of prosperity and manifestation and abundance and i do feel that there's also help here I mean, this is still putting in the effort. It's Venus in Capricorn. So Venus in Cap Venus retrograded in Capricorn last January. What was going on for you back then? Because there could be third parties that are involved. Right? Maybe you've been working extra hard from then without being rewarded for your extra work. And now here is the offer. Here is the recognition and the accolades. In the action and advice, we've got the sun. This is amazing. Absolutely. The sun is such a beautiful card, right? The sun is creativity, happiness. Look at the two, uh, the two youths. We are all sisters and brothers, my dear friends. Coming together, the sun will bring healing the sun will bring prosperity will bring happiness recognition remember it's leo and venus is going to retrograde in leo so which part of your chart does leo take up because that's where venus will be retrograding let's see what because the sun is also uh, the leader it's confidence it's um of course it's also you know romance the fifth house, the fifth natural house, some sort of a gamble or risk taking, or even maybe some of you may have invested your money in a certain um, investment. I don't know. Um, 
Leo is all about investments, right? It's all about taking a risk. May have been a difficult risk and just suddenly and unexpectedly um, there are your winnings. There is your prosperity. Look at the fish here. And this is not me telling you to go and uh, invest your money, okay? You may buy a lottery ticket with one dollar and win a lottery ticket. Uh, it doesn't mean that you have to go and invest your money because I'm saying that. There is potential here. Not everyone is going to win the lottery. The lottery for you could mean a position of power. Being at the top of your game, the devil, that's what it is. Let's see what the outcome possibly is with the five of pentacles. We've got the two of pentacles. This is Saturn in Capricorn. It's like, oh my God, working two jobs, needing to decide whether it's worth uh, the effort or seven and nine, see? Uh, what am I saying? It, that That's seven pentacles. Again, it's Capricorn. What am I saying? It's five and two is seven. And seven of pentacles would be Capricorn energy. So this Capricorn full moon, right? Two of pentacles speaks to, uh, could also uh, speak to choices, but things being up in the air still, let's see. Because this could also be someone needing to decide on whether they're going to continue to invest in this relationship, in this partnership, in this venture. Um, this could also be a position that someone takes where the money is not as good, but Saturn promises that the, uh, the rewards will be huge. So this may be a difficult decision for some of you. Let's see. And we've got the Seven of Swords. This for me, Seven of Swords here, Venus in Aquarius. Venus in Aquarius is intelligence, finding intelligent ways to make a, your wish, to fulfill your wish. This is tact, this is diplomacy, this is being very smart. And some of you may also be not be trusting totally. If this is a group, you know, you're affiliating with a group, this could be a um, a group effort, let's say we've got the five and the seven here. It could be a little bit challenging but and difficult turns, but there is much promised here. Let's see what's at the bottom. We've got the Knight of Pentacles here, slow and steady. Slow and stable. If this is someone that's been underhanded and sneaky and you, there's no trust, some of you are having difficulty in trusting someone here, maybe possibly also reconciling or giving someone a second chance. Let's take one more there. And we've got the Three of Cups. So Three of Cups we know is a wonderful card. We know, obviously. But it can also speak to other people being involved here. Seven of Swords can speak to information that's being withheld. But for me, this is more about being intelligent and trusting that all will be well. I mean, Three of Cups, the Cups are overflowing. Pluto in, ca in Cancer, this is like the money coming home, the prosperity coming home or a metamorphosis where your emotional life is concerned. What's going on on the moon? The Eight of Pentacles and the Five of Swords. We've got a Page of Swords. This could be a messenger, a message of truth. Someone's decided um, to communicate, to come out of the darkness. Um... This is something also that you could be learning, which could be, you, which could be a little bit challenging, but make sure to look at the details. If you are signing anything, any contracts, whatever you're starting, is it a business, whatever it is, do not uh, wait until, you know, after the 20th, after the 20th of, of July, with Venus retrograding, do not, do not sign anything so make sure now that you are looking at the details um at the fine print okay we've got the two of cups here so there is an agreement moon and cancer 
Moon in Cancer, my dear friends, which is going to be the new moon on July 17th. That's the day that the nodal axis shifts from Taurus Scorpio into Aries Libra. On this new moon in Cancer, which will be, oh my God, there's going to be so much pressure. Astrologically speaking, on this day, you should um, join us and listen to the month ahead astrology where I've gone into the details around July 17th and till the end of July what's going on astrologically it would blow your mind we've got the two of cups so we do have an agreement here this could be an emotional love connection this could be an agreement between two partners there is there are going to be reconnections people coming back from the past some of you may be revisiting the past and letting go of someone from your past right starting a brand new chapter in your life it will not be the same for everyone What's at the bottom here? And we've got the Eight of Wands. So lots of messages, lots of action, lots of changes. Let's take one card on that. Aha, uh -huh, tower moment. We've got the Queen of Pentacles. And it's it shows Capricorn. She's holding Capricorn. Queen of Pentacles. She's worked very hard for this. For this new beginning... So this Queen of Pentacles we know is usually the mother. She is very much the minor arcana of the Empress. It's interesting in the Divine Spread, we usually uh, see the Emperor and the Empress. Now we haven't really, we don't really have many faces here, right? And people, but we've got the Queen of Pentacles and what was mentioned here was the King of Pentacles. So, you know, not, and we're not only leaning towards the Earth signs, because the king and the queen of pentacles, they are, they are of earth. Now, in all of our charts, there is earth somewhere. Most of us, 99% of us, have got strong earth in our chart, right? So we all take that form of being the mother or being the nurturer or being the person that people go to or that works very hard. You know, she works hard for the money, Donna Summer. She works hard for the money, and most of you that are watching me are feminine, feminine archetypes. So this could be your tower moment, your awakening, your major shift. You're being put into that garden, that Zen garden. This, can, this could also be you having the ability financially to, to bring that... Uh, prosperity and that garden of eden make your home your life that garden full of abundance right very much the em the empress qualities these this could also be sudden news pertaining to um, your mothers for those of you that are younger or there's something pertaining to a promise here is the ace of pentacles she's holding it and she's very proud of it too she's very proud of it which this is what she is, she is receiving. And remember, the ring. This could be a contract for many of you, a business contract as well. It's like there's a competition. She wins because she's stable, because she's, she's hardworking, she's been working hard, and she's going to continue to work hard. At the bottom, as I said, is the Eight of Wands. We've got the Ace of Wands. So whatever you are creating... Expect good news to come in. This is Jupiter in Sagittarius. The good news could be coming from overseas, from um, a long distance, from the internet, from another country, from a foreigner. Right? Ace of Wands. The light comes on. The passion, the temperature rises. Nine of Wands. Having worked really hard. Right? And the Nine of Wands we know is still holding on and this could also speak to someone also having put up a wall there's so much fire here so much passion and so much desire and so much inspiration and there is the will of fortune there it is wow wow everyone okay what shall we do now I think I would like to take three Sibylas on this 
this um, coffin. First of all, no, the mail that comes in. The mail, the letter, the communication, the contract, the agreement. What is this? Wow, this is like the Ace of Pentacles. It's the Denaro, it's the Ace of Pentacles. And it comes from the soulmate. It's the Six of Cups. It's from a soulmate. And it speaks to a matrimony van advantageous. A matrimonio vantazio. Vantazioso. <laughs> Don't mind my, um, my Italian. An advantageous matrimony. So there's a rich, there's a lucrative offer here. And as I said, I mean, Pluto, Scorpio is big amounts of money that come from, I said, the eighth house before. I don't want to re-talk about that again. But, you know, Pluto, Pluto does speak to riches, but can speak to a lot of darkness, a lot of fears, a fear of an ending. And instead of an ending, there's a prosperity. Suddenly there's abundance. We've got like the Queen of Wands here, the Sweetheart. Pensiero, like the, uh, very similar to the, to the um, Hermit here. Six of Pentacles, remember how I said that we finish with the Five of Pentacles, we're one step before. Someone is trying to make up their mind about a romantic offer or about an offer of great abundance, a payback, uh, returning of money, uh, reciprocating, um, where there was a lot of confusion. There's the, uh, there's the morte again. There's the, um, the death card once more, the coffin, and it's the five of swords, which is also here. This is someone possibly also leaving a third party situation because the five of swords, remember, speaks to competitive energies, can speak to legalities as well. Something is really finished here. This could also be a third party for, falling out of the equation. Someone uh, finishing. It's like letting go of some karma, big time. And then we've got the merchant, which is all about, he's putting in a lot of thought pertaining to his prosperity, his business, to a contract. This could also be, for many of you, an offer about business. It does have to do with the World Wide Web, with other cultures, other countries. This is commerce and business. This is the entrepreneur that's thinking how else to make more, to bring in more prosperity. And it is a number 13, so many changes where business is concerned. And we've got La Reunion. This could be an old business partner returning as well. Unbelievable. Eight of Wands and the Reunion. There's the Eight of Wands. So there is reconciliation. There will be a lot of reconcil reconciling with past partners. Someone's taking a journey. Someone's taking a voyage here. Right? Three of Wands. There was physical distance between some of you. There is a lot of desire, a lot of fire. Eight of Pentacles, the, the precious gift is someone coming in to reconcile someone that you are partnering up with. Unbelievable today's reading, my dear friends. I don't know what else to say. I don't know what else to say. Wow, that's all I can say. I want to take just one last card on this uh, Queen of Pentacles. And then I think I will take some love messages, my handwritten love messages. Why not? What is this pentacle about with the Queen of Pentacles? And we've got the death card. Unbelievable. What a hang, uh, what a cliffhanger. I was going to say hang cliff. I mean, <laughs> that's putting the, the, um, that's putting the cart before the horse. Unbelievable. With Neptune that is stationed right now, my dear friends. That is just incredible. 
If this is not a metamorphosis pertaining to this queen, to this divine feminine, to this major change. What I like about the death card though is that the next position is the justice card. That's what saves the day here because we've got two quite difficult cards, obviously. There's something that she's leaving behind. She's, she's dealt with some difficult karmic karma. Karmic karma. <laughs> she's holding the pentacle which speaks to Capricorn. Capricorn is, could, could also speak to her career or her, her future, her, her reputation in the world as well. Who she is, her position in, 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 in the world. Is she separated? Is she single? Is she a business owner? What is she? But she's going through some sort of a metamorphosis, no doubt. And justice is going to be served here. Let's take a few of my handwritten love cards because I know that you like them. And then I just want to show you the chart just for two minutes. And then we will end this reading. Also, I'd like to let you know that uh, someone is checking you out on the internet. For some of you, you are being looked at, observed through the internet. Someone is spying on you. I don't want to be the third person. Five of Swords, which has come through twice. Your eyes are familiar to me. I know that we've shared lives before. You must feel it too. Now, of course... Uh, I don't want to be the third person. This could be a, a partnership not wanting a third partner. You know, they do say the more the merrier sometimes, but two's company and three's a crowd sometimes. I'm not in love with you. I have to be honest with you. And that's the three of swords. Unbelievable. So someone is being honest and closing the door. Now Scorpio comes through quite strongly here. Scorpio, which is all about the South Node. Remember temperance here, which is saying everything's going on in divine timing. Archangel Michael is saying that healing will come through for you. But it's like everything needs to be done in the right way. We do see the rainbow behind her. This is, remember, it's Archangel Michael. Just know that spirit has our back. Seven and four of cups, that's eleven. 11 cups. I feel like a fool for leaving you. Three of wands. I don't want to be tied down. I will never marry. I don't believe in marriage. That's the nine of pentacles. Maybe someone is not ready to take the next step. Someone needs to be alone. Someone could still be carrying, um, you know, the weight of their past. Not ready. Okay, so this may not be that someone doesn't believe in marriage. Maybe they just don't believe on, in signing on, you know, signing on the dotted line. Um, because it does speak to someone that's very, very independent. Nine of Pentacles, right? My heart still bleeds for you. I'm not living, just breathing. That's the Nine of Swords. Lots of stress and anxiety. I want you with me. I want you to be mine. I can't live without you. Four of Wands, that could be an offer for something long term and we are from such different worlds but I'm willing to work on this union let's see where this will take us eight of pentacles which is here in the divine position so eight and nine of pentacles lots of um, earth lots of grounded energies this is remember the full moon in Capricorn so it works really well wow for earth and for the water signs I can't my uh, I cannot help myself from falling in love with you every day. Here is the Ace of Cups. I think we've had practically all the Aces apart from the Ace of Cups. Here it is, my dear friend. So we've got all the Aces. We've seen all the Aces. Oh, my goodness. I am wishing you well. I hope that you enjoyed this divine spread. Thank you so much for spending your precious time with me, your precious Sunday with me. As I said, the individual love readings will be up in the next two, three days on Patreon. We have done the elemental readings. 
there for free on YouTube. Um, you can get the links beneath this uh, video. We've got them there on the channel. And happy 4th of July for those of you that are in uh, America. Be safe. Don't do anything risky. Enjoy the day with family and friends. Get out and about. Connect with people. And um, happy birthday if you are celebrating your birthday. I think I will leave it there. I am so looking forward to... Um, I'm so looking forward to a bit of a break. Maybe in July, maybe a little bit in August. Anyway, we'll see how we go. But let's just... I just want to show you the chart just for a moment. For those of you that are not interested in the chart, I've said goodbye. For those that are interested in the chart, here it is. So, all right. I just wanted to show you... The full moon here it is there's the full moon and there's the sun right so the moon opposite the sun it's happening at the 11th degree you could see this here 11 degrees and 18 minutes but what i wanted to show you is here is the moon in a beautiful aspect um over to to jupiter because the moon is at 11 degrees and jupiter is at nine degrees so a trine is very helpful obviously And, of course, we see still that Pluto, Pluto is here in Capricorn at that anoretic 29 degrees. And here are the nodes, right, this squaring over to the south node. Pluto is squaring over to the north node, right? So this is a T-square, my dear friends, right, a T-square. So the pressure is on Pluto, right? So Pluto is all about metamorphosis, changes, and of course we know that Pluto is the elite. It's the people that are in charge. It is, you know, politicians, uh, all the people who sit in power, nevertheless. Um, there's a lot of urgency and a lot of stress. When we see 29 degrees, and uh, Pluto is a very slow-moving planet, so it's not not easy. Always, my dear friends, you know Capricorn. Capricorn is the natural tenth house, and it is ruled by Saturn. Now, obviously, um, from Capricorn to Pisces, um, you know the ruler of this full moon is Saturn, and they're in a sextile. Okay, they may not be exact, but they're still good, and a sextile is a good opportunity. We've got good aspects. We've even got Neptune uh, sextiling, a 60-degree sextile over to Pluto. We've got Chiron that is trining from Aries over to Venus and Mars. The lovers are in Leo. We'll be talking a lot about Venus retrograde and the v Venus star point happening in Leo. Right? This is a big deal. Um, which will start on the 22nd, 23rd of July. Um, but we've also got Uranus. This is a bit of a tough one. Uranus squaring over to Mars, which could be very dangerous. I have uh, spoken about that to many of you. Get your foot off the pedal. Uh, be careful with fireworks now on the 4th of July. Take care. Do not speed. Don't do anything risky. Uranus is also it's in, in the nervous system. It's electrical it's uh, mars is fire it's war um now there'll be sudden turns of events you know venus squaring um uranus squaring over to venus sudden changes unexpected turns of events tower moments that you do not expect right and uh what's good is here is jupiter this is the main thing that i wanted to show you so here we are see this of course, it's the opposition, but this is also called a wedge. So the focus is on Jupiter. Jupiter will help very much so on this Capricorn full moon, which is happening on the 3rd of July. Right, 3rd of July, 9, um, 9.38 p.m. Uh, oh, this is saying Melbourne, Australia time. Oh, I'm not in Melbourne. Oh, that's a good one. 
I think I'll have to change that. But anyway, Melbourne time. So anyway, Google it. <laughs> Just caught me off guard right now because I redid my computer, as I said, and I had to um, fix the program here. Um, this is Astro Gold, if you're interested, that I am using. And um, I think I will leave it there. So I'm going to say happy full moon to all of you. Thank you so much, my dear patrons, especially for being here. Um, for obviously for supporting this channel so that we could keep uh, keep creating free content on YouTube um, and get more people to to understand what's going on in the in the sky and the stars and therefore be able to interpret that in their own personal life so it is all about astrology is all about awareness now I do feel that uh, of course tarot and astrology um, they work hand in hand together so that's why I utilize both and this is uh, what I like to do especially especially um, for the personal readings that I that I do okay I always like to look at the astrology um, as a guarantee let's say to what I feel I need to tell you yeah so there's a lot of there's a lot of helpful energies here which is uh, something that I'm really happy about because we know that Capricorn being a Saturn ruled sign usually is a very heavy and grounding full moons are difficult uh, as they are generally speaking full moons are very stressful and in a Saturnian sign can be very heavy very much like feel like lead a lot of heaviness and responsibility and um, needing to work hard and pressing on the on the pressing on the um, pedal and not getting anywhere you know putting in the extra effort not seeing the turnaround the rewards but it's all about timing dear friends and of course now we've got such helpful energies here so this is a great promise and I'm wishing you well for that I better go it is very hot here in Greece so not easy to work with when it's extra hot, it's hard to work. So it's a Sunday evening. I'm wishing you well. Enjoy your day um, and have a good week. I will be in touch. Love you all lots. Namaste.